Welcome here at uh, the We Share Fest in, uh, in Paris. Good to see you. Yeah, with pleasure. Yeah. yeah. So you're the co-founder of the Peer-to-Peer -peer Foundation. Uh, uh, what is it? Well, Peer-to-Peer -peer Foundation is um, a global network of activists and researchers um, who believe that peer production is a, a new model for the economy and society. Yeah. So first of all, we observe everything that's happening. So you know, peer-to-peer -peer in, uh, in business, in sports, in politics, in spirituality. And then we try to understand it and we, we look at emerging models and institutions and, and then we spread the word about it. And the idea is that, you know, people are doing this all over the world, but they're not necessarily looking at each other. And so we are one of the places where people can say, oh, you know, they're doing this, something similar, maybe better than us, we can learn from them, they can learn from us. And so put a bit more gas, gasoline in the, maybe that's yeah. the right word. Yeah. <laughs> maybe yeah. put a more solar energy in the, <laughs> yeah. in the machine. Yeah. 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 Well, we've got enough solar today, so that's, yeah. <laughs> that's no problem. Yeah. And, and, and where does your, your, your interest and your, your passion for, the, for, uh, uh, for this peer-to-peer -peer movement come from? Well, I was a bit in a personal crisis in the late 90s. I was working for business and uh, you know, the way today, I mean, I'm, I was uh, fairly high in the hierarchy and the way people are now really squeezed and dehumanized in the corporation for me was really problematic. And then you look around and you see a society that produces more inequality instead of less. Oh. And that, that is kind of uh, destroying the environment in which we live at the same time. So I thought, you know, I thought to do something about it basically and, and uh, decided to quit my business career, took a 90% pay cut, uh, went to Thailand, I took first a two-year sabbatical, mm -hmm. you know, just to read about phase transition, basically. I wanted to understand how systems change. You know, I looked at the end of the Roman Empire, the end of feudalism, things like that, and I was looking for something that could be used today to change the world, and I, in, and I already had looked and discovered peer-to-peer -peer as a kind of format that is emerging everywhere and that has the seeds of a new, a potential new society within it. And, 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 and then? Uh, what happened then? Well, it was at the beginning a slow process. I first started documenting myself, uh, opened a wiki, a blog, mailing lists, you know, Facebook, Twitter, and then make, you know, in a way kind of creating an invitational policy. So, you know, try to make it interesting enough so that people would actually come to me because I was living far away in Thailand and it worked. Um, so now we have like 28 million viewers in our wiki, uh, maybe 100,000 a month in our blog. You know, we have a combined reach of a f 7 million people via Twitter. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean we reach them every day, right? It's this kind of maximum potential if you... Yeah. Uh, um, and then people start inviting me for speaking engagement. You know, at the beginning was three year, 15 a year. This year I've been traveling for 15 March until 15 June. And you know, in a day like this, it's like six interviews. You know, yeah, busy, so, <laughs> busy, busy stuff. Busy, busy, busy. And how do you manage that? Busy. That, 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 that's because uh, many people uh, now know you, so they're asking you for interviews yeah. and presentations. Yeah. How do you manage to keep the right balance uh, in, in in doing the right things? Yeah. Uh, uh, and also building up your your knowledge and and, uh, and also the organization and doing the daily things like the, the interviews and uh, yeah, uh, of yeah. course they reinforce each other. But how do you make the right yeah, balance? Yeah, well, it's not easy. Um, you know, because there's something about being an activist that is like infinite, you know? If you, if you want to make a bread, you make your bread, your bread is finished. But if you want to change the world, you know, it's kind of an endless thing. And so where do you stop? And, and so, you know, the biggest danger is self-enslavement, uh, righteousness, you know, thinking you're better than other people. So there's a lot of dark sides to being an activist that you really have to be aware of. And, you know, I hope to be a bit aware. <laughs> and, do you think, um, and do you also think uh, it's more a cultural thing? Because uh, I think in Belgium and Dutch people, they are from nature more and more polite. Uh, yeah. Well, well uh, people from the US are, in our, or in my opinion, more and more open and more yeah. confident to, to the outside world, also yeah. when you're an expert. Do you also uh, think that uh, your cultural background also has affected well, that? Well, I have the chance to be a bilingual person from birth. I mean, I had a French-speaking mother and a Dutch-speaking father. And already that exposes you to kind of two different ways of looking at the world. You know, the Latin, more exuberant, 
more verbal way and then a more Nordic, more, you know, more Calvinistic uh, yeah. way perhaps. Mm -hmm. And kind of this ability or, you know, at first it's, it's hard actually because, you know, you're, you don't fit in any particular case very well. But once you kind of transcend that, then it's actually an advantage. So, and the thing is that in my life, you know, I wasn't too happy when I was young, so I had to really search, you know. So I've been, I've done a lot of, you know, things in spirituality, things in politics, things in business, things in technology. And at first they were separate, but if, as you achieve an integration in them, you become a person that can bridge worlds. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, have a good family, the ability to to retire once in a while. And I have that. I, I live in Thailand mm -hmm. with an extended family. And, you know, that's my haven. It's uh, when I'm there for two, three months, I don't have any engagements. I just do my research. I read, I go out with my kids. Um, and I, I had a balance for many years. Right now, I, I lost it again because there's just too much interest. Yeah. So yeah. now what we try to do is professionalize our organization, you know, get more funding, and pay some people because there's only so much things you can do for volunteering and at yeah. some point you really need uh, people who are accountable to do certain things that yeah. you can you know yeah, yeah. And, and 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 also uh, so what is then your role uh, in organization are you the leader or, or, or are you the facilitator or yeah yeah are you still yeah for yeah because well you know what i'm trying to say is like it's not leaderless it's leaderful right so it's not a, i don't believe in leaderless there's always people pushing or giving an example inspiring others and I think a good leader is somebody who inspires other people to be autonomous themselves right so it's not a hierarchical leadership it's uh, invitational leadership yeah. um, and you know I, I, I was a you know I've been a manager for many years and I just don't want to do it anymore so you know I, I try to build the organization but at the same time I, I try not to be too much part of that part of it I, yeah. I, I struggle between this polarity of being, you know, a lone rider thinking and and then yeah. being an activist who yeah. is required to do all kinds of social yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. but it's also, uh, I think, a, a, a hard balance between thinking and and, 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 and philosophy and, and yeah, uh, yeah. doing things. But, you know, the thing that, I mean, one of the things that I, uh, works for me is, that, you know, in the peer-to-peer in the peer, the peer, -to peer foundation, and it's a strange formula, but I say we peer produce knowledge about peer production. So the way we build our wiki is the same as open source software and open design. So we know what we're talking about yeah. because we have all the advantages and the difficulties yeah. of these other communities as well. So yeah. we're not just from the outside an observer, we're actually practicing what, what we talk yeah. about. Yeah. Um, and the second thing is, um, you know, is I travel a lot, which is important because you, you know, talking with people is vital. You know, it's, um, you know, I, I know I have a huge carbon footprint, and that's not a good thing. And if everybody would live like like me, it would not be a good thing. But some people have to do this. You know, it's not a pleasure trip. It's the fact that I can talk to people in Brazil, and and Portugal, and Germany, and Thailand, and China, and Ethiopia. Who can do that? And who can then also create that human connection? Yeah. 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 So that's important. Yeah. yeah it's it's a combination of the virtual and the physical that is effective. Yeah. And you just mentioned uh, 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 creating a better world, but that's a quite uh, quite a, a, a far goal, and also yeah. right, and not, not a really as, uh, as, uh, abstract goal. It's, it, it's not uh, in ten years. Okay, now I'm finished. Now the world yeah. is good, so now I'm going to yeah. retire and other stuff. So how do you manage to keep some more short-term goals uh, yeah. that, that keeps your motivation for what you do? Well, my philosophy is that you have to be have a very radical vision of where you want to go, and not to make too many compromises on that but then to be happy with everything that goes in the right direction, right? So in that sense, I'm quite pragmatic. If something goes in the right direction, even a bit, mm. I decide to be happy about it and to build on those advances. Um, so, so what we do is connecting people to each other. Okay, you're doing this, you're doing that. Do you know that you're doing the same thing? Um, and then they learn from each other and, and by learning from each other, they can go faster in what they do, right? Uh, and it's by little touches, you know, it's like impressionist painting yeah. uh, that, we, that we work. But we always have the bigger goal in mind, but, you know, we don't have the power to decide on that. So the only thing we can do is facilitate, yeah, and you know, be a catalyst. Yeah. And, and, and 
the the the, uh, the, the peer to peer movement is 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 you know existing uh, for, for quite a while, but now with the all the collaborative stuff going yeah. on, it's, it's going to really fast. So, so what do you see happening, and are you happy with what you see happening? Um, well, yes and no. I mean, you know, it's it's dual, right? So the the kind of world we have is not moving in the right direction, and it's accelerating moving in the wrong direction. Uh, the alternatives are growing fast, but a large amount of them are being captured and controlled by the same forces. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's enough good things happening, and, you know, that, that um, and also they're connecting to each other. So, you know, we have to kind of have an ecosystemic thinking like, okay, you're doing food, organic food in a healthy way. You're doing a solidarity economy. You're doing sharing knowledge. Um, we need the three, so how can we converge? Yeah, uh, that's that's the thing. You know, how can you converge these efforts? Yeah, and 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 how do you uh, manage to 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 get all these different thousands of different initiatives all over the world uh, 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 working together while everybody is focusing on doing their own thing and also they're not physically located near each other? So. Yeah, well, what what I say to that is that you know the commons is the glue uh, because all these moves are actually creating common goods shareable goods and and they also you know kind of developing the same type of institutions they may not know it from each other but there is actually an underlying logic to this so that's why we actually talk about peer-to-peer -peer as a mode of production yeah. it's a it's a new mode of creating and diffusing value and it has economics it has politics it has new types of institutions and so most people today say okay this world doesn't seem to be working but what's the alternative and we're saying, they, you know, look around, open your eyes. People are building the alternative. They're actually doing it. And they're facing problems. They're looking for solutions. By, by cre finding a solution, they're creating a little piece of the puzzle of, this, of the coming system. Yeah. Um, so you, by, by carefully looking, you can actually make some predictions about where it's going. And so where it's going to, because now we see lots of new initiatives or new, uh, also like like Jeremy said uh, in his keynote, it's it's, uh, it's 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 a new initiative, but it's really old school finance and organized. Yeah. So so where is it going to? Well, a kind of very generic way to say it is that today in the system we have competing organizations, but within the organization there's collaboration. Because you know it's like sports. Our capitalism is like sports, right? It's football teams fighting each other. But inside a football team, you need to work together. In the new system, there's a commons, right? So all these people are creating, like open software, open design, and all these entrepreneurs are bound by this collaboration to their commons, and then they compete. So it's kind of like a reversal. The now the system is competition first and collaboration within that competition and we're going to a situation where it's collaboration first and competition within that collaboration um, and that's a huge shift yeah. Um, yeah. then the other thing I would say and that's where it's, you know, it's really radical is that the current world is based on the premise that nature is infinite and so we, infinite growth and it's destroying the environment because the, the nature is not infinite no. and then we have artificial scarcity in knowledge and culture and you know through intellectual property and we say we have to reverse that we say no to artificial scarcity if something is abundant keep it that way and if something is scarce respect its scarcity right don't deplete it regenerate it and it's very easy to say of course but that's it's a very radical change if that would happen and peer-to-peer -peer does that and you know in the peer-to-peer -peer system this is kind of like the the natural way of functioning. Yeah, and 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 what a way because there are uh, now there are a, a divide the, the the old and, and new economy. Yeah. How do you think they can 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 get together? Because really, believe just like with with generations, uh, uh, you have to respect each other, learn from each other, yeah. uh, and then you can create innovation and move forward. Yeah. So. Well, okay. So you have top-down adaptation. Existing institutions are trying to adapt, and then you have bottom-up. You know, new communities are formed and they start from zero, and then, but they have to adapt to the old system to survive and to... And those two things are happening at the same time. And so you, you create a hybridity, you know? Weird mixes of the old and the new. But, you know, look at the Catholic Church. It's been in existence for 2,000 years. In ancient 
uh, Roman economy based on slavery, in the feudal economy based on serfs, and the capitalist economy based on, on workers and capital. They're still there, yeah. right? So it doesn't mean that every institution is going to, to, to disappear, and some of them will successfully adapt. And you know, the, the, the Catholic Church was challenged by the Reformation, but after two centuries or so, they did their own counter-reformation. So in, you know, in, so in a way, they had to adapt to the innovations of the Reformation in order yeah. to survive as an institution. And that probably will happen with a lot of institutions. Those that don't will probably disappear. But some of them will be successful in their transition. Yeah. yeah, um, we, yeah. So I, I'm not the kind of person who would say, the universities are going to disappear, you know? I don't think so. Maybe. But more likely, some universities will, will find the right balance between formal learning and informal learning, yeah. you know. And, and, and because with Cardiac I'm now also going to focus uh, uh, on the main dilemmas of the collaborative economy and try to find answers or at least better questions uh, uh, yeah. uh, 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 to these dilemmas. Uh, in, from, your, from your perspective, what are the main, the key, let's say five or ten, just how many you want to uh, well, dilemmas? So the, the key problem for me is, a val I call it a value crisis, is that the old style of capitalism was about actually making things and selling things. The new style, the GAFA, you know, Google, Facebook, Google doesn't produce documents, Facebook doesn't produce communication, YouTube doesn't produce videos, Uber doesn't produce uh, cars, and Airbnb doesn't produce hotel rooms, right? They are enabling us to, do, to exchange amongst ourselves and then they take their take on it. But they're not really giving back, and that's the real problem. You know, you look at Facebook, what do we get for creating this huge platform? Where's the money going? And, and the answer is 100% is going to the owners. None of it is going to the actual creators of that communication. So we need, we need to move to a system where, the, where you know, it's based on co-creation and on co-distribution. So we recognize that the platform is co-created by various forces. Maybe those that invest in it, but also the people who use it. And then we find a way to distribute the value so that the value streams again, because it's not streaming. Yeah. It's 100% exploitation now. Yeah, and, 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 and getting back to you as a person, because um, what I would li like, because uh, uh, I, I, I also write your book, and what I would like over there, because uh, many times uh, we are talking about Uber, Airbnb, about, okay, the bad guys, capitalists, but what you say, okay, they're also adding the value uh, in the system uh, and, and taking their cut, and of course you can yeah. discuss about it uh, if, if, if the rate of the cut is, is too high or too low. Yeah. It's not a discussion. Um, but what I also had with uh, reading the book is it's, it was quite hard hard to read. Uh, it was really because it's, it's because, because you're looking from a really broad and also really yeah. going back in time. At, at, at what way do you do you manage to 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 uh, uh, make these kind of stories, uh, but also to uh, uh, keep them? Uh, acceptable for people to, to read, so it uh, so the, well, the the bridge between yes. the gap between the knowledge and yeah, and, and but the people. it's basically through examples. You know, I, I a lot of my lectures I just give endless examples, and people can understand the examples. Then from the examples you build a theory, rather than the other way around. So and I think history actually works a lot well because uh, you know most people have a vague idea of of, of history, and and so it gives them kind of references. And a, a broader way of thinking about it than just like you know here and now. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's also what I like about it. Uh, it's it gives the, the 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 things happening in the right context. Yeah, and, and not uh, on the hype of today. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. So keep yeah. on doing that. Uh, thanks for yeah, your, for thanks your time. Mike. Thanks nice so much. You. Yeah. Nice conversation. Thank you.